My hope is that the trial results of Reduce It will be viewed as practice changing. Certainly, we saw large degrees of benefit across a variety of different endpoints, including a 20% risk reduction in cardiovascular death that was statistically significant. Also, significant reductions in myocardial infarction, stroke, hospitalization for unstable angina, revascularization procedures. So the number of events prevented in terms of the population treated was really quite substantial. And therefore, I think physicians will view the results as practice changing once they become familiar with the trial results. Now, whether the results apply to icosapentethyl, the prescription medication that we studied, or whether they would be generalized to other different sorts of triglyceride-lowering compounds or omega-3 fatty acids is a question that I'm commonly asked, and I think the results of the trial apply to the drug we studied, which was icosapentethyl, two grams twice a day, so a total of four grams a day of that highly purified icosapentenoic acid. That's very different from studies, say, the ASCEND trial or the VITAL trial that also examined omega-3s at a lower dose, a gram a day, and mixed preparations of DHA and EPA, not a pure EPA at a high dose as we studied. So I don't think the results of our trial could be applied to those drugs, which in fact have been shown to be negative in terms of trials such as VITAL and ASCEND and meta-analyses of some of the older trials. So the results that we saw, which I think are quite impressive in terms of magnitude of benefit, really shouldn't be extrapolated to other compounds, either other prescription compounds that may lower triglycerides, uh, such as the ones I mentioned, or fibrates, or niacin, and certainly shouldn't be extrapolated to over-the-counter supplements, which are not closely regulated and have variable degrees of EPA and DHA and other substances and saturated fats and so on in them. So really the results should be applied to icosapentethyl. And this is a position as well that in the most recent update to the guidelines, the American Diabetes Association agreed with. Uh, that is, they gave a level A recommendation, their highest level of evidence, to use of icosapentethyl in primary and secondary prevention type patients with elevated triglycerides in the range I mentioned, 135 to 500, despite therapy with statins. So that's really the target population for icosapentethyl, and those ADA 2019 update guidelines said that the results really shouldn't be applied to supplements or niacin or fibrates. In fact, they say those different compounds shouldn't be used with statin therapy because there's no evidence supporting their use.